This month has been a real test. Do we actually have what it takes to raise these sheep? Hey guys, welcome back to Toops Time. We have had our St. Croix sheep now that we got from Greg Judy over at Green Pastures Farm up in Missouri for one month now. This video is to give you guys an update on how things have been going and whether or not we even still have these things. All right, let's go ahead and get the first thing out of the way. Yes, we still do have our sheep. We actually have all 12 of the sheep that we bought from Greg Judy, so we're doing something right, or our dog is just that amazing. We also bought a dog that we named Pippa from Greg Judy as well, that was trained to the system that we're using here, and the same system that Greg Judy uses to keep all his sheep in, and that system is just one single hot wire. Now, we did make what I consider to be not necessarily an improvement, but an insurance policy of adding one extra wire. It's honestly just because we've never owned sheep and it just seemed crazy that you can hold all those animals in with one wire that's only 10 inches off the ground. Now that we have raised our sheep with our two wire system, I honestly think that it is completely possible and Greg Judy knows what he's talking about even more so than I thought originally. So let's go ahead and go back to the beginning. Whenever we first got our sheep here, we actually unloaded them off of the trailer into a paddock that we made out of some net electric fencing that we bought. And this was to just ensure that they were used to our property before we let them out into the other paddocks that only have the two hot wires to keep them in. And they minded that fence just fine as well as the dog. If anything, the sheep minded the fence a whole lot more than the dog because they were just so darn happy. So that leads me to this. What were the two main reasons that we actually got these sheep? One, a meat source. Two, land management. With the type of grass that we have that's super prevalent around here, being Cerisa lespedisa, our cows do not eat this, so land management was very important for us, and these sheep were supposed to take care of that problem. Whenever we first let them out of the trailer, we were super concerned that they were going to hop out of the trailer and be sniffing around and then go for the Bermuda grass that's intermixed in all the Cerisa grass, but they did not. You, as you can see in this video right here, the sheep went straight for this Cerisa lespedisa grass and just started eating it down. In a matter of a couple of days, that little paddock that I made for them, which was a 40 by 40 paddock, was eaten down to nothing. And I had to go ahead and expand the paddock with that other roll of electric fencing that we bought because what we wanted to do was keep them in that net fencing for about a week, which was uh, an instruction given to me by Greg Judy himself and that was to just give them a week to get used to seeing us and calm down and get used to our property. In that week, the sheep never once tried to even touch that fence. The dog jumped the fence three times. Now, each time she jumped that fence, I had to pick her back up and I just tossed her over the other side and I scolded her, which was also an instruction given to me. Whenever I would scold her, she would head back over to the sheep and hang out with the sheep just like she's supposed to. And the only time she tried to jump the fence is whenever we would leave. Whenever she was out there, we never had to worry about her jumping fences. She hung out with the sheep just as she's supposed to and protected them just as she's supposed to. The problem was whenever we would leave. She would jump the fence because she just wanted to come back for more love. Um, we do love on her a little bit, as you can see in these videos, but we don't. We try not to overdo it because we want her to know that those sheep are her family, not us, which is another reason for scolding her whenever she does something wrong. So just in the matter of a week, the sheep already started really getting used to us being out there. We never were able to get super close to them, but just in a matter of a week, I was able to get within a few feet of them, about eight feet of them to be precise, without them running away from me. They were getting used to me walking around out there because the entire month so far that we've had the sheep, I've been expanding and adding more paddocks for them because I was not finished with that. 
So one question you may have for us is how have these sheep actually impacted our lives? Has it added a lot more work? Has it stressed us out to the max? No, I wouldn't say that to be completely honest other than me actually building the additional paddocks that I'm going to have to separate them into which is something I would have had to do anyway. It hasn't, the sheep themselves have not added any extra work. Not much at all. I mean, they kind of just do their own thing. The sheep graze all day. Uh, they nap, they sleep. They don't need me. Um, we do actually have some fun with them. We have been trying our darndest to train them to get used to us and start to come to us and let us feed them and even let them eat straight out of our hands, which is awesome. The past few days, we have started working on that. In a matter of three days, sheep are literally on a video, as you see right here, eating out of my hands, eating out of my wife's hands. They are still pretty skittish of Asher because just like any other animal, little kids tend to scare livestock animals because they're really fast and they like to be loud and run around but for us we park the mule whenever we go back there get out of the mule and they're walking to us already and we've only started the training a few days ago all we've actually done to train them i bought a big galvanized tub stuck it out by their waterer and i bought a smaller stainless steel pail and we get some alfalfa pellets the same stuff that we were feeding the cows and we start shaking it as we're walking up and say here sheep 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 here sheep 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 and whenever we do that they immediately start walking towards us and we basically sit down right next to the pail or right next to the galvanized tub and we dump the pail of feed into the tub and then we grab some ourselves with our hands about eight or so of them right now maybe ten of them will immediately all come to that big tub and start eating and we're just we can sit there and pet we can pet a few of them without them getting skittish. Some of them are still real jumpy whenever you touch them. But the, the point is we are touching them. And it's, we've only been training them a few days and I've only had the sheep a month. And so many people you talk to like to tell you that, you know, you're never gonna be able to touch these sheep. Sheep are super flighty. Well, the type of sheep that we got, we were told that they weren't as flighty, which is part of the reason we got them. And to me, that's looking like it's true. I don't have them in a pen. I have not caged them up just so I can pet them. They are out on their pasture and I'm calling them in and dumping some food in a, in a galvanized tub and they're coming to me and letting me pet them. It's pretty amazing. Still got quite a few of them to work with, but the one that's been eating out of our hands, we've actually called her Dot because she's got this little spot on her ear. Real cheesy name, I know, but I don't know how else to keep up with a bunch of sheep you know we're, we're planning on actually having a pretty large flock of them one of these days now that we can tell that they are absolutely loving the cerisa grass so the next thing i'd like to do is take you guys with me and we're going to check out our fencing it is based off of the idea that greg judy has for keeping his sheep in it's he uses just one uh, single electric hot wire we are going to be using two of them Aside from this fence, as you can probably, or this gate right here, just the other day at the wedding, I added an extra, extra bit of insurance just in case Pippa decided to be jumpy and hop across that fence because she's pretty much the only one right now that concerns me whenever it comes to getting over that fence. The sheep just seem completely content. So let's go along here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hey. Of the equipment that we use here electronically is Gallagher brand and this Gallagher S40 solar powered unit is what we also have way across the way that we're using for our cows. Technically that one unit for the cows would have worked for the sheep as well if I would have tied it all in. I just felt that it's nice to have a backup because ultimately if that one goes out I could tie this one into that system over there and run both systems off of one unit just fine. But again, same thing with adding two wires instead of just one, it was just extra insurance for me. And I just felt a whole lot more safe having an extra unit. So basically how I have my area set up is this paddock that the waterer is in 
is what I call the commons paddock and this paddock is the main paddock that all these other ones are going to be linking back to. So this here is our watering system. This water actually isn't all that dirty, it's just a really old tub. <laughs> um, so essentially what I have here is IBC tote that I leave the valve open on and it's hooked to a water hose that comes down and gravity feeds to this tub and inside underneath that cage right there I actually have an automatic shutoff valve so that's what the valve looks like you can get these from pretty much any farm store they work really really well the water hose just goes into this box shaped valve and then there is a piece of foam in the top of the valve and as the foam floats up it ends up shutting off the water supply but what this does is keeps this at a constant level and then all I have to do that way is manage the level of water in the IBC tote and then what I do whenever I get low on the water in the IBC tote is I unhook the hose from it and use my tractor and bring it back to my watering hose so this is Pippa's dog feeder. This is based off of Greg Judy's design. So essentially you have a cage and then at the front of the cage you have a 10 inch gap that allows the dog to go right underneath into their feeder without allowing the sheep to get to the food. Yeah, sheep, sheep, sheep. 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 Look at him. Yeah, sheep, sheep, sheep. Girl. Uh oh, y'all gonna knock this over, huh? Yeah, sheep, sheep. You see my knee? Right here next to the bucket. That not amazing. We've only been training them for a few days, and they are just right here next to me. Let me pet them. Look at this one right behind me. She just sniffed my ear. Actually, she's nibbling on my shirt. You'd think that they were goats. Hey. So as you can see, they're all still here and I'd say things are going quite well with them. They're taking really well to our property 
and they're doing their jobs around here so I think we might just keep them <laughs> Thank you so much guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video about our sheep and the one month update. <laughs> Look forward to bringing you guys even more updates later on. If you did like this video, please go ahead and share it. Please, please, please share it and comment, subscribe, and hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching again. God bless.